A few years ago, we did a study of frontal crashes in vehicles that had a good rating in our frontal crash test and how people in those vehicles who were belted and had airbag deployments were still being injured or killed. And a lot of those crashes that we found were into the backs of large trucks. We wanted to look more closely at those and see what could be done to try and make those crashes more survivable. And there is a federal regulation for the guards that have to be put on the rears of large trailers, but it turns out that regulation is not working well to prevent underride crashes. As we thought about ways that we might be able to improve the situation, we thought that it would make sense to compare how different designs do in the exact same crash conditions. So we took trailers from the eight largest manufacturers by sales volume in the U.S., and we tested each of those trailers in three different conditions, all at 35 miles an hour. By doing this, we're able to show that some guards already perform much better than others. We've conducted all of these trailer underride tests with the same passenger vehicle. It's a 2010 Chevy Malibu, and we chose it just because it is a typical mid-sized sedan and because it's a good performer in frontal crash tests at this speed. What we really wanted to highlight is that it's the trailer design that needs to be improved and changed, not the passenger vehicle design. I'm Sean O'Malley, Senior Test Coordinator at the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. For this test, we've purchased eight brand new semi-trailers. We will first put it in position in the crash hall, take measurements of each component in the back of the trailer, the frame rails, underride guard, the door opening. Then we will load the trailer with 38,000 pounds of concrete blocks. We've tested them at a full width where a car hits the center of the trailer at 35 miles an hour. We then tested 50% overlap where only half of the car hits the trailer. And then again, we ran it at 30% overlap. Post-crash, we will measure the trailer again. With these measurements, we determine how far things have bent and moved. After this test, we will remove the car from the trailer and place it in a photo studio. In the studio, we will do a detailed analysis to determine dummy contact points inside the vehicle before we measure the door and window openings to determine how far the trailer intruded into the vehicle. Manufacturers have been really receptive, by and large, to the testing that we've been doing. Most of them have never been able to see how their guards would perform in a crash test. What we're hoping is that as they get their results and go back and compare how they've done relative to their competitors, that they might be able to make improvements just on their own initiative. But in the long run, there's a chance that the regulation could even be rewritten to require a lot of these improvements.
When a car and a truck collide, the car is at a serious disadvantage. One particularly devastating type of crash is when the car slides underneath the back of a heavy trailer. The Institute tested trailers to see how well their guards prevented underride in a 35 mile an hour crash to the back. They were trailers from eight different manufacturers who together make up 80% of the heavy truck trailer market. Each trailer was tested up to three times. There's a full overlap crash test, a 50% overlap crash test, and a narrow overlap crash test. All eight trailers prevented underride in the full overlap crash test at 35 miles per hour. All but one prevented underride in the 50% overlap condition, and only one managed to prevent underride in all three test conditions. The federal government requires that heavy truck trailers be equipped with underride guards that are intended to keep cars from sliding underneath when they crash into the rear. The problem is that when guards are only designed to minimally meet that standard, they're not strong enough to keep that from happening in crashes even at speeds as low as 35 miles per hour. Modern cars have a crush zone at the front that's designed to collapse in a way that minimizes the risk of injury to occupants inside. But that only works in a crash with a trailer if the trailer's underride guard stays in place, as it has here. In an earlier test conducted in 2010, the weakest guard was on the back of a trailer manufactured by Hyundai. We crashed this Chevrolet Malibu into the center of the guard at 35 miles per hour, and the guard was just pushed out of the way because the bolts holding it to the trailer broke. Had people been riding inside, they would have been killed. The redesigned Hyundai guard worked much better. In the same 35 mile an hour crash, it held up, allowing the built-in crash protection of the Chevrolet Malibu to do its job. People riding inside would have been able to walk away without any serious injuries. Only one trailer prevented underride in all three of our tests, including the narrow overlap. That trailer was manufactured by Manic, who sell Trailmobile brand in the United States. Most trailers have the vertical supports for the underride guards close to the center of the trailer. The Manic engineers tried something different. They moved the vertical supports outboard, which makes the ends of the guard stronger. All of the trailers in this series of tests had guards that met a Canadian standard, even though the Canadian standard requires that guards be stronger than they're required in the United States. Our research shows that cars are still vulnerable to underride when they hit the outer end of the bar. Outside the main vertical support, there isn't enough additional support to keep the bar from bending forward, allowing the car to slide under in a devastating way. Designing underride guards to the Canadian standards it is a good first step, but Manic engineers show it's possible to go much further. If all trailers had guards like the one on the Manic trailer, many of the lives that are lost to underride crashes could be saved.
Anytime cars and trucks collide, the car is obviously at a disadvantage. But one of the most devastating kinds of crashes is when a car slides under the trailer of a large truck. Our new research shows that many of the injuries and, and deaths that occur in these kinds of crashes could be prevented with stronger underwrite guards. We've studied how underwrite guards are performing in real world crashes and discovered that many are failing catastrophically. The guard bends or it may break away from the trailer, allowing a vehicle to slide under it. Our crash tests demonstrate how easily some guards fail at relatively low speeds. The federal government requires that the backs of semi-truck trailers have underwrite guards to prevent vehicles from sliding underneath them in the event of a crash. Our crash tests show, though, that the standard is not as strong as it could be and as strong as it should be to prevent this kind of underwrite. Cars' front end structures are designed to crush in a way to minimize injuries to occupants in serious frontal crashes. But when you crash into the back of a large truck, that protection only works if the truck's underwrite guard stays in place. The Chevrolet Malibu is a top safety pick. And this is a Malibu after a 40 mile per hour crash with another car. The front end structure has absorbed the crash energy from that. And you can see there's lots of survival space in the occupant compartment. This is a Malibu after it struck the rear end of a trailer with a weak underwrite guard at only 35 miles an hour. This front structure never got a chance to do its work. Instead, the trailer just pushed back, peeled the hood back, put it into the laps of the dummies, and real people could have been decapitated in a crash like this. The Wabash trailer had the strongest underwrite guard in this series. Its guard meets a tougher Canadian standard. This Wabash trailer prevented underride when the Malibu struck it in the center where the guard is stronger. But it was a very different story when the Malibu crashed into only the outer end of the guard. The guard isn't strong enough there, and it allowed the Malibu to slide under the trailer, and the trailer ends up back in the occupant compartment. Cars are much more crash-worthy than they used to be, but the federal standard for underwrite guards hasn't kept pace. Many crashes with big rigs would be much less severe with a stronger federal rule.
coming?